Romeo and Juliet, Jack and Rose, Edward and Bella, Troy and Gabriella. The longing desire for tragic love stories, fateful romance, ecstatic affairs, hot hookups and finding the one is part of our culture just like magic is part of Harry Potter. I've always wanted to use that spell. You can't imagine it without it. And I get it. The feeling of falling in love is magical. Having a supporting and loving partner is beautiful. But what if you don't want to just hook up? What if you don't find the one? What if all you find is yourself? I don't have like even kind of a boyfriend. Not even kind. I don't have someone that I'm texting that's a guy that might someday be my boyfriend. <laughs> There's like nothing going on right now. That's pathetic. What are you looking for in a man now to wear this cloak? I'm not looking for a man. Let's start there. Everyone, how you doing? My name is Svenja, aka Svenjurita, your German Senjurita, and this channel right here is a safe space for you and me to be okay with who we are and to be cozy, compassionate, and comical. Never underestimate the power of alliteration, my friend. And first of all, I've got a question for you, beautiful, amazing person watching this video. You might be single, you might be in a relationship, but have you ever experienced a situation like this? Oh, hi Dolly, hi Vernon. Svenja, nice to see you. How are you doing? I'm doing well, just working on an interesting project and... How's your love life? I'm single. You're single. Oh, well, I'm sure you'll find someone soon. How come someone is? Beautiful and nice like you is still single. Maybe you're just too picky, you know? Your expectations are way too high. You know, you should speed it up a bit. Once you're over 30, no one will want you anymore. How do you want to become a parent when you don't even have a partner? <laughs> you know, my son's friend has a carpenter. Who has a friend? Who has a dog? Who is friends with another dog? Whose owner? It's pretty nice. Well, Actually, I'm... And he's your age. Do you want me to set you up? Oh my god! Three hours later. Wilfred! Hi! This is Dolly. There's someone you've got to meet. Oh god, please, no! 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 Hi. If you have experienced a situation like this, let me tell you, you are not alone. I've been there hundreds of times, and so have many other people. Am I cloaked in loneliness or something? Everybody has been pestering me about my love life. I've honestly felt so much pressure growing up, being single, and just within the past few years, I've learned to see through the societal pressure, and I realized that there's nothing wrong with me just because I'm not in a relationship. I really, really wish I would have watched a video just like this when I was younger, so I really hope it can help some of you out there. So let's talk about how our society treats relationships and being single. Let's get down to business. Chapter 1. Media Madness All the time we are told and shown that there must be something wrong with being single. Oh, this sucks! Especially media, music and pop culture make us believe that being single is weird and that life as a single is lacking something and is less valuable. Being alone sucks! It starts in childhood with Disney movies in which the happy end mostly involves the princess finding her prince. Then of course there are Hollywood movies and rom-coms in which, again, it's all about finding the one. And of course, the happy end always involves two people made for each other, finding each other, because that's the only way to have a happy ending, right? You can't be happy on your own. I'm hopeless and awkward and desperate for love! <laughs> Then it goes on to music, where a majority of songs are about romantic and sexual love. I mean, just take a look at your Spotify playlist or whatever playlist you listen to, or the charts or whatever, and you will probably find that most of the songs on there are about romantic and or sexual love. 
Even songs we thought, or at least I thought, were single anthems, like for example Single Ladies by Beyonce, aren't in fact. I mean, in it she sings put a ring on it, so she basically also just wants to get married. And it also plays a huge part in trash TV shows like The Bachelor and The Bachelorette, Prince and Princess Charming, Love Island and Are You The One, in which the ultimate goal is finding the perfect partner, the perfect match, and those who don't want to settle for the next best thing, who they know won't make them happy anyways, lose and have to leave. It's a comedy for the masses. Thus, romantic love is portrayed as the ultimate key to finding happiness and winning in life. I think we all grew up hearing those narratives. Get married, get a partner, and you will live happily ever after and never be lonely again. The relatively new Netflix show Singles Inferno literally takes this to a next level. It portrays dating and being in a relationship as paradise, whereas being single is supposed to be like hell. Wow, I could so easily freak out right now. Then there are also series and movies which portray this pressure that society puts on single people. For example, Holiday and Home for Christmas show how the single protagonists are pressured by their family and friends for not having a partner, especially during Christmas time. Home for Christmas also portrays the systematic discrimination the single protagonist has to face. The Christmas pajamas are only available in a double pack for couples and at her job as a nurse, she has to work the holiday shift so that her colleagues in a relationship can enjoy some romantic time with their partner. But this pressure and this systematic discrimination single people have to face is not just part of music, media and pop culture. To put it quite dramatically, it's bitter reality. Welcome to the real world! It sucks! You're gonna love it! The term for this is called single shaming. Let's dive into this. So the Urban Dictionary defines single shaming as making middle-aged adults who have chosen to remain single feel like freaks. But actually, from my personal experience, single shaming can affect almost everyone, regardless of gender and sex, obviously, but also not just middle-aged adults, <laughs> because I've honestly felt single shamed since I was 14. And I'm not even kidding. I'm fine! <laughs> totally fine! I, I don't know why it's coming out all loud and squeaky, because really, I'm fine. And in my view, it can also affect single people who are involuntarily solo. More people than ever are single nowadays. And with the pandemic, it's still on the rise. And still, society often discriminates against being single. The hell with society. Being single is acceptable as a phase. Maybe as a transition between two relationships and optionally a preparation for a partnership. But it is frowned upon as an independent, self-chosen, permanent way of life. Let's just quickly look at some of the most common single shaming phrases. Please let me know in the comment section which of these you have heard and experienced before. Here they are, the top 10 most common single shaming phrases heard by singles. My favorites are definitely one, you'll find someone soon. If I had a dollar for every single time someone said that to me, I'd be Elon Musk level right now. Then three, I can't believe you haven't met anyone yet. <laughs> Are you dating? Uh, no, I'm not dating. Really? There's no one at all? No, I'm totally single. Then seven, 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 seven. Seven, let me set you up with someone. I don't need you to try to set me up. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. <laughs> I've heard that one a million times. Shut up, shut up, shut up. <laughs> And last but not least, 10. Why do you think you're still single? In my case, there's no reason at all and at the same time like 1000 reasons. But I personally think that it also just involves a lot of luck finding someone that you're compatible with and that you can 
be in a happy relationship with. And maybe I wasn't lucky. But also phrases like these count as single shaming because they imply that being single or having friendships is worth less than romantic relationships, which is not the case, at least in my opinion. Friendships and family and so on are just as important as romantic relationships. Or they imply that there is something wrong with being single and something needs to be changed about it, which it doesn't. So let's further look at why single shaming is so problematic. Single shaming puts pressure on all of us, also on people in relationships, because sometimes or oftentimes even bad and toxic relationships seem to be more accepted than being a happy single. <laughs> why? 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 Because in our hemisphere, being in a relationship is still seen as a symbol that you are in control of your life, that everything is going smoothly and according to plan. Well, at least the plan that society set you up for. And it doesn't even matter how harmonious the relationship is. As a consequence, people stay in bad and toxic relationships out of fear. Fear of being lonely because maybe they didn't learn how to be on their own, fear of being criticized, and simply the fear of being a failure in society. Some people even fake being in relationships just so that they don't have to handle all the pressure. For example, in Japan, it's not uncommon to hire fake boyfriends or girlfriends for New Year's Eve. This is so messed up. But obviously, single shaming is especially bad for single people. Bella de Paolo is a social scientist who has been studying singles since the late 90s and she has coined the term singleism. This term describes the ways in which people discriminate against being single. The stereotyping includes the assumptions that single people are miserable, lonely and selfish, that they are desperate to get married and that there must be something wrong with someone who is single. And now comes the saddest part. De Paolo also states, some single people internalize all that, even if they like being single. They even sometimes think that liking single life is itself a sign that something is wrong with them. This is so incredibly sad and messed up. I can't, I just can't. Several novels will be written about it. <laughs> and I think, the saddest part about this is that I used to be one of those people. Gladly, those times are over now. I'll bet there'll be a wee bit o celebration. Outdated structures definitely play a role here because the societal norm is still cis, monogamous, straight couples with children. Another important factor is age because the age of 30 kind of represents something like an ultimate deadline. If you haven't found anyone by then, you've basically screwed up socially. My 30th birthday certainly wasn't that much fun. This is especially true for women. It's better to be over the hill <laughs> and buried under it. Why? What? What? Why? Probably evolution because it gave women something like an expiry date to start a family and once that one is missed the pity will break out <laughs> hence single women are more likely to be single shamed than men kill, kill me now. <laughs> single men are bachelors single women are spinsters go put on your spinster dress moreover the term crazy cat lady is mostly associated with a pitiful, pathetic, strange and lonely woman. Sorry, but what's wrong with being an independent woman who provides a nice home for very cute animals? I don't get it. And have you ever heard of the term crazy cat lord? I haven't. And then it's also very important to note that there are asexual and aromantic people who just have no need for romantic relationships or sex. And there's nothing wrong with that and nothing to feel sorry for. In my opinion, those people are still far too little hurt and included in our society. Overall, single shaming is wrong and dangerous because you shouldn't just get into a relationship out of pressure or out of fear or just for the sake of being in one. 
but because it enriches your life. Many believe that as a single, you are more likely to feel lonely. Because I'm so damn lonely, not even Animal Planet does it for me anymore. Bella de Paolo therefore states, marriage responds to the universal fear that a lonely person might call out and find no one there. There's nothing like the bitterness of the lonely. But you can also be really lonely in a relationship and you cannot be lonely at all being a happy single. And even if you're lonely being single and you are involuntarily single, you shouldn't just get into a relationship because you hope that it will mend your loneliness. Rather, learn how to enjoy being on your own and create a life that you can love with but also without a partner. So I'll end this chapter with a quote that beautifully sums everything up. My alone feels so good. I'll only have you if you're sweeter than my solitude. <sighs> just let that sink in. Isn't that just beautiful? Terrific. <laughs> really? Bitchin'. <laughs> But now that we know that single shaming is basically bad for all of us, what can we do about it? If you're a shamer, you have probably not really noticed that until now, because I don't think that you would shame and hurt other people on purpose. If you find yourself pressuring other people because of their relationship status, if you find yourself making patronizing comments to your friends or family members or acquaintances, you should question yourself and hopefully stop doing it. Please let other people be whoever they want to be, be in relationships or no relationships, however they want to, without pressuring them and just mind your own damn business. Thank you. Good tip. Let's start with the mindset thing. You might be the only single person in your social circle and all your friends and family members and acquaintances and so on are in relationships. And even though you might be a happy single, because of that, you might sometimes feel a little weird about being on your own. Believe me, been there, done that. What I always do in such a case or what I do in general is I look at the relationships around me and I ask myself, would I want to be in those relationships? Would I want to give up my sweet solo life in order to be in a relationship like that? Believe me, in the vast majority of cases, the answer is a definite no. No! <laughs> and by that, I don't mean to like <laughs> talk in a bad way about other people's relationships, but their relationships are mostly not those kind of relationships that I would want for myself and that I would be happy in and thrive in. So what about you? Look at the relationships around you. Would you really want to be in those kind of relationships? Answer it for yourself. Keep in mind when most people single shame, they don't mean that in a bad way. They are probably just a victim of society's weird perception of being single. And maybe it's just their way of showing that they care about you and your dating life in that sense. So just keep that in mind that most of the time people don't single shame in order to hurt you or shame you. But then we come to number three. Just because they don't mean it in a bad way doesn't mean they should keep doing it. So communicate openly and respectfully that single shaming is inappropriate and doesn't help you or anyone else in any way. But when you're doing that, avoid making self-deprecating statements and instead speak positively about your life. Because you want to show others that there's no shame in being single and that they don't need to pity you or shame you or set you up with someone and that you are okay the way you are. This is just a reminder for you because maybe you just need to hear it. You don't need to justify your love life. So it's totally okay if you don't speak about it at all or if you give vague responses. Stand by yourself and your singleness. We single people need to show the world that there is no shame in being single. So it's important for us to take 
action. Yeah. I want action, not words. Yeah. We should not hide about being single. We need to express our needs more, we should be more open with our feelings, and we should definitely support each other. So you just gotta jump in and be scared and stick with it until it gets fun. We must show people that being single is just another life path that should be equally accepted and that single shaming is not okay. So please speak up, be open about your status and stand by yourself and your singleness. We are all in this together. So how can you be happiest being single in a world that always tells you that there's something wrong with being single? The art of being single. Focus on creating a life that you can love with and without a partner. Your time alone doesn't have to be a sad time. It can be quality time with yourself. Nurture your own soul like you would nurture a relationship. Loving this. <laughs> I know this sounds incredibly cheesy, but it's also incredibly true. So hear me out. Start now. Don't wait until you have a partner to build that house, to buy that dog, to go traveling, to go try out that new amazing restaurant at the corner. Start now. You don't need a partner to do all those things. You can do all of that on your own. For example, you can go solo traveling. I've done it before and it's really cool. You learn a lot about yourself. You don't have to make any compromises. You can go wherever you want, eat whatever and whenever you want. It's really cool. So if you haven't done it before, please try it out. Don't wait for anyone to make you happy. Do it on your own. Treat yourself as you would a partner you love. Buy yourself that gift, buy yourself that nice dinner, soothe yourself because you are the most important person in your life and you should treat yourself like that. You know, even if you find a partner one day, he or she or whoever may leave. You are the only person who will always be around. So you should be in a great relationship with yourself and that should be the most important relationship and you should nurture it and strengthen it and build it and just be very kind to yourself. And here are some other ways to treat yourself as you would a partner you love. You can treat yourself mentally, your body, and so on. Very important one, build a support network. As we talked about, being single definitely does not equal being lonely. But obviously you still need people who you can count on, who you can trust, who love you, who you love, and so on. So if you don't have a partner, you can invest even more in your friendships and your family and so on. Believe me, I'm an introvert and I love to be on my own most of the time. And most of the time it takes me really long to answer people and stuff, but I still try to do my best to show the people that I love that I care about them. So show the people around you, your friends and family, that you love them. Let them know that they can count on you, invest in them, and you can also count on them. Surround yourself with other happy single people. Because they definitely know how it's like to be a single person in our relationship romanticizing world. And they definitely understand you and get you. And I think it's just really nice to feel understood and seen. So this may be kind of an obvious one, but I just wanted to put it out there. And last but not least, this may be a little over the top for some people, but I still wanted to put it on the list. Speaking of lists, keep a list of people you admire from the past and present who lived great single lives and use it for inspiration. You know, I, I, I never married. I chose not to marry. As we talked about, in our world, it can sometimes feel like there's something weird about being single and being a happy single is kind of not possible. Wow, bummer. But having people you can look up to who live or lived happy, great single lives shows you that you can do so too. That there's no shaming being single and you can be a happy single in this world. If you have any more tips, please let me know in the comment section because we can all support each other, help each other 
and show the world that being single is totally okay and just another life path that should be equally accepted. What if you don't find the one? What if all you find is yourself? Would that really be so bad? You know, I work as a wedding singer and I see beautiful, happy couples marrying each other pretty often and it's wonderful. So don't get me wrong, dating and being in a relationship can be wonderful. And what is life without love? But it's not the only life concept that can make you happy. Everybody has a different path and all of those should be equally accepted. Regardless of whether you are intentionally or unintentionally single, you should never feel like there's something weird about you or like you have to hide your status or anything like that. And you should never feel like you have to depend on another person in order to be happy. Because I've got another cheesy quote for you. One is a whole number. I think Beyonce said it best. Make sure you have your own life before you're someone else's wife. So thank you so much for watching and always remember you are perfectly imperfect and amazing. So I really hope to see you again next time and until then, bye bye. <laughs>